everyone. Uh, I'm Xiang Zhao. I'm the co-founder and the CEO of a company called eTailor Hub. Uh, eTailor Hub is a company aiming to put uh, products, resource, technology, uh, logistics, all the infrastructure into a platform and enable uh, sellers, retailers to sell global. That's why we name it eTailor Hub. So under eTailor Hub now we have two solutions. One is called HyperSKU. About it's a uh, dropshipping solution I will introduce to you later. And another is HyperLogistics, which is a global logistic platform. Okay, so uh, I've been to uh, many e-commerce events in lots of countries. So the most frequent question I was asked is, how come Chinese sellers are selling so many products in such a low price? So today I'm gonna share with you what I've learned in the past six years from the Chinese uh, export e-commerce market. Okay, so, so here is the agenda. Uh, we're gonna take a quick glance about the market size. And then uh, I'm gonna share with you the advantages Chinese seller have, why they are selling uh, such big quantity and a low price. And the third is a um, big opportunity I observed, I would like to share with you guys. And the last part is talking about how HyperSQ can help you. Okay, okay. So let me give you a brief introduction about myself. So this is a picture took in a pioneer event in China. I want to say that most of my best looking picture were took in the pioneer events as always. I hope I get a, another one today, okay? So before I run this company, I was the former um, country manager of Pioneer China. So running the, the China business, like building up the team from scratch in the past four years. So I will say I was very lucky to join Pioneer. It's a great company, a great family. Uh, and also like the e-commerce booming in the past five years is crazy. So I was lucky to witness the business grow from scratch to a two-digit billion business US dollar in China. Uh, so I think I, I was very lucky to see that and I would like to share the experience. So before that, I work for a company called China Advisor, which is a US listed company uh, providing a software solution to retailers and sellers to enable them sell multi-channel and also like uh, manage the traffic multi-channel. Uh, I was sitting on the advisory board of uh, China Association of Trade in Service, providing my global knowledge to the government to talk about, to let them, how to say, I plan the, the policies, the structures. So uh, in parallel with my new company, I'm also studying my EMBA program in a school called Sivas, which is one of the best uh, uh, in the world. Okay. So let's take a quick glance of the, the market size. Uh, so in the past six years, the China export e-commerce has grown like 20% year over year continuously in the past six years. So uh, in estimation in 2020, the market like the export e-commerce will become 1.3 trillion US dollars in 2020. So we're gonna see it next year. Uh, one study showed that among all these Amazon sites, like Mexico, Spain, France, Italy, uh, even Japan, so 40% uh, of the third party sellers are Chinese sellers. And uh, most of the Chinese sellers usually have a larger volume compared to sellers from other countries. So which means uh, we can say that uh, from the Amazon third party volume, 40% of the volume, more than 40% are come from China. So uh, I'll give you a few names, for example, Cloud Factory for Deal. So how many people know uh, Cloud Factory? Wow, well, like more than half of. So about for Deal? Not many, okay, so Xi'in. Wow, I saw a lot of ladies raise their hand. <laughs> Probably one of them are like a most loved um, uh, site. So all these platform marketplaces are built by Chinese companies selling to a different continent. For example, like Kilimo selling to Africa, Club Factory selling to India, Jolly Check, for Deal mainly for Middle East. So there was a, a, like another study, like there was a number that I was shocked when I saw it. So in 2000, like November 2017, 
In a single month, there were 4.72 billion parcels shipping out from China. So uh, let's say every, even only one order is $5, then in total that's a 23 billion business. And not to mention that uh, the Amazon FBA volume are not included. It's just parcels piece by piece shipping from China to worldwide. Okay, another study showed that, uh, so 63% of the online purchasing from marketplaces, uh, another 37% are from social e-commerce. So we're gonna talk about social e-commerce later. Uh, in this study, I also showed like 38% of orders that shipping, like parcels shipping uh, worldwide uh, were from China. And 32% of the customers making buying decision based upon the fast delivery. So logistics is definitely one of the critical uh, item as the, the gentleman from DHL mentioned. So I told you about like the market size just, and now I would like to share with you why. So before we go into details, I would like to show you a format I use for myself to make analysis. The, the, for example, it's very simple. Traffic times conversion rate, and then times average order size equals to GMV. If you want to really increase your GMV, there are four aspects you can uh, improve. I call it more, fast, good, and saving. What does that stand for? More stands for more SKU, more channels, more territory, more buyers, more users. Faster stands for faster delivery, faster turnover, like a faster moving products, and a fast update. Good stands for good delivery, good service, and good reviews. Saving stands for cost saving, time saving, and effort saving, giving a better user experience, buyer experience. Um, if you want to increase your GMV, you can improve in some of these elements. For example, uh, more channel definitely means more traffic, right? Faster shipping can help you improve your conversion rate and average order size in the same time. Are we clear? Okay, okay. Okay, so now let's move into the details. For example, as you see, these are the marketplaces across the continent. And these are the marketplaces Chinese sellers are now selling on. I, I, I know some uh, sellers in personally, like they are selling on all of these marketplaces with one inventory, with one interface, with uh, like one operation team. So what does that mean? That definitely means more traffic. Right? All the marketplaces are popping up in the past like uh, three or five years in different countries, different continents, like providing, generating traffic. So the Chinese sellers are able to onboard to these marketplaces, then gain the traffic, convert it to order to GMV. Uh, so besides the traffic, in the past 10 years, uh, China has been built like a very robust and completed uh, infrastructure for the cross-border e-commerce. For example, there are companies that are providing online offline academy to teach manufacturers, teach uh, uh, sellers how to sell online, how to sell in each definite country, uh, specific country. And also there are software solution providing free software solution, help sellers manage thousands of products with hundreds of stores. And there are companies like Pioneer providing payment service and even working capital service to help sellers accelerate their business. They help you sell more and also providing a very good, stable service to the consumers you have. Also, uh, there are a lot of, as you might know, that there are Alibaba, some other B2B platform, B2C platform. So the Chinese sellers have some tools actually just to select the product from domestic marketplaces and with a few clicks, it gets uploaded into their own store, Amazon store, eBay store. What does that mean? It means definitely more SKU, and it also means fast. For example, they can upload 100 products, see the commercial rate, 
And uh, maybe the like 5, 10 conversion rate to really nice makes the ROI. So they drop off the, the rest 90, upload another 100 again, and then drop it off. So it's like a gold washing. Whatever it left, it gives you a really nice ROI. That means more, that means fast. Okay, so there are also offline exhibitions like this every week in different cities, like uh, how to say, invite sellers and also manufacturers to meet face to face, to physically touch their products to make deal, and also to discuss how to improve the products, what kind of feature should have. So this stands for more, also stands for good, good quality, good product. Besides product, as I mentioned, logistic is one of the critical elements. So in China, that now, the, as I show you, so the way, for example, all the product will be consolidated into a few like a uh, harbor city, Shanghai, Beijing, Shenzhen, within three days, the national wide, and then these products will be all consolidated, shipped into Hong Kong, and then Hong Kong is an inter international hub, and then from Hong Kong, it ship out worldwide. So the whole flow can take only seven days to, to deliver to the consumer. These are mainly for, uh, we said, small parcels, products like uh, lightweight, smaller size, but that, that stands for faster. Okay, other than this, uh, for the solution for the small parcels, there are also solutions for overseas warehouse, like for big products, for example, they ship the product from um, uh, Hong Kong, Shenzhen to London. They have a warehouse uh, in London, and from London, they cover the whole Europe like within three days. Oh. So this stands the, like a, so from this solution, sellers can sell product like furniture, large equipment, some tools, really heavy and big. So this covers a wider range of categories. And also, definitely, it stands for fast. From UK to Europe, it's within three days delivery. So I'll give you an example. This is one of the logistics partners we closely work with. On a daily basis, they ship small parcel, like a half a million small parcel, to these European countries. And the performance is like around seven days. Uh, take France as an example. They only take less than five days to ship to France, to the consumer. And it's a full tracking service, meaning when the consumer place order, they will see the order status. Okay, so because of all the advantages I mentioned, so to compare the Chinese sellers versus non-Chinese sellers, there are a very big different cost structure. So, uh, where it's from? It's mainly from shipping and sourcing. So the left side is non-Chinese sellers cost structure. The right side of the Chinese seller's cost structure. So I'll give you an example. Uh, here is a dress, like a very nice dress selling on a seller's website, a foreign seller's. It cost $36. Another case from a Chinese seller's website, it's only $8.6. And they're still making money. They are not losing money, okay? So you see the difference. Okay. Just a quick summary on the advantages. Firstly, the fast booming global e-commerce market brings a gigantic traffic to sellers. Second, the massive sourcing and the production capability enables Chinese sellers to quickly find the hot selling product and quickly make, uh, how to say, update um, on the products. The third, the most important, the robust global B2C platform, the solutions enables sellers now selling to multi-continent, multi-countries with a stable service. So these are the three core advantages I see like from the Chinese sellers. So these are too good, these are so good. What can we do differently? Like what kind of opportunities we have, right? So there are different models. I would like to give you a direct answer from what I see in the market, like the future. I will say one of the biggest opportunity are in the social e-commerce. Let me give you a reason. Uh, so Chinese sellers are really good at selling stuff, 
really good at operation, improved efficiency, while um, they have kind of like a weakness. In this chart, it shows, for example, 27% of the ad spend from Chinese sellers are on the promotional banner. What does that mean? Amazon sponsor is like a lightning deal, the deal of the day, the last sale, flashing sale, on eBay, on Amazon, on these marketplaces. They spend tons of money to get that banner. Other than that, they also spend another 27% on the PPC ads in marketplace. Amazon sponsored product, so wish ads, all these. While only 50% of them knows or like uh, working on, shop, uh, on social e-commerce, on social media. Less than 2% of them knows how to do email campaign. Why? I would say it's mainly because of language barrier and a culture barrier. So Chinese people are very easy to access to new products. So they bear their mind into the products, into the operation. They compete with other Chinese sellers head to head brutally on marketplaces. Lots of them, I will say that from all the sellers I know in China, we, like by the way, in Pioneer, we manage over 200,000 Chinese sellers in our ecosystem. From all I know, less than 10% of them can speak fluent English. And lots of them actually don't go abroad. They didn't study abroad. They, they don't really know the world outside, the culture outside, and also the, the people, the buying behavior outside. So they heavily rely on marketplaces, rely on marketplaces traffic. Well, when I go to events, like e-commerce events outside China, I saw people always talk about Google ads, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, influencer marketing, and the creatives. These are things that people always talk about. Everything is about the traffic, brand, the design, creatives. Let me give you some examples. See, these are like a very simple content of creatives. You can make it on your laptop. What are they selling? They're selling beads, right? The Pandora beads. <laughs> See how many likes? 531,000. How many share? 22,000. Imagine how many orders from that 22,000 share. Let's play like another one. Simple, right? It's just a template. You can implement it. You add some photos, then it's done. See? This is also really simple. I, I will say that for you guys who ever used uh, Nokia knows this game, right? Okay, so this is a very simple content. You can make it on your laptop, and there is a buy button here. So there are tons of orders after this, uh, this kind of creative. After this, I realized there is a leak in my formula. What's that? Actually, the traffic can be, can be created. The demand can be generated. You don't not, you are not necessarily rely on traffic from marketplaces. You can have your design, your creative, and create your demand and then convert it to, to orders, to GMV, to profit. So I will say that I would, like, when I think about all this, I was uh, giving myself a question. So why? Why Chinese sellers always talk about products? Why Western sellers also talk about, always talk about traffic. Eventually, what resources you have define your business model. 
Chinese sellers are born in the center of the manufacturer. They know the products really well. They know how to make it, how to optimize it. The Western sellers, they were born in, like, for example, European, like all the countries around, multi-language, international traffic, brand design creatives. So people are being, like, living on both sides, like either sides, and they rely on the resources they own. That's, but it's interesting that I've been in India for 10 days. What I see is kind of like a perfect combination. You guys know products. You guys know how to make products. You guys also know how to run traffic, generate traffic. You are not banned from Google, Facebook, Instagram, all this, right? <laughs> Shame to say that, but that's the reality. So you know traffic, you know product. That's a perfect combination. That's why I see the huge opportunities in India. Okay, so what does this Western seller do? It's very simple. They find an interesting product, they find the products they think they can sell, and then they start to run traffic. They test the traffic, they build up a store by Shopify, Magento, WooCommerce, any kind of shopping cart, and then they drive the traffic into their store, convert it into orders. Once the order generated, there is a volume. So after the order generated, they pass the order to their vendors, let the vendor handle the order fulfillment. And most importantly, they take away the major profit. It's fair, it's simple. So whoever owns the traffic, owns the profit. So I'll give you some number to, to support. Uh, Shopify in last year, 2018, their GMV is 41 billion. Year over year, 57% growth. Their users are 820,000. Sorry, there's a typo. 820,000 uh, users. 36% year over year growth. Imagine how many people now joining this uh, e social e commerce, trying to like, uh, drive traffic, trying to get their own orders. And if you did a simple math, 41 billion divided by 820. Every store has like less than 50,000 US dollars a year. So how many people can build a brand with only 50,000 US dollars a year? A brand takes a lot of effort, like customer loyalty, branding, your own customization of the product, the package, it spent a lot. But 50,000, it's not affordable in my, in my judgment. A lot of people are selling, finding interesting products from India, from Japan, from China, from Korea, and then sell it. Uh, Shopify is one of the biggest, I would say they are the biggest shopping cart solution and social e-commerce solution, but if you are checking all these social shopping cart, Shopify is 70% of the market share. We use Shopify GMV uh, to calculate. The market is 204, uh, 240 billion social e-commerce. It also allies uh, with other analysis, like Amazon is 400, uh, like a four, 400 something billion, and the social e-commerce 240. Imagine how big it is, like a, if you only take a slice, a slice, slice pie of it, that will be a big business. Okay, so we talk about the big trend, the big opportunities in uh, social e-commerce. Now I would like to share that how uh, HyperSQ, how our solution can help you. So how many people know dropshipping model? Raise your hand. And then how many people are having Shopify store? Oh, okay, fine. So uh, people who have Shopify store might know this. So it's a very simple concept. Dropshipping is that you uh, drive traffic, the consumer come to your site, place the order, and then the order will be passed to the supplier. Supplier directly fulfill the order to the consumer. Uh, what's the beauty of this model? Firstly, no inventory. You make a sell before you buy, okay? You just need to upload your listing, the product, the photo, uh, the videos. Once they make order, you buy. Second, there's no fulfillment hassles because most of the hassles will be handled by a vendor. So, uh, okay, wait a second. So, and also it's a very small investment to start. You open a Shopify uh, website, uh, a store, it's like $29, and 
and then you can test some traffic, and then you are ready to go. Uh, the last is also like, it's very easy and quick to adjust. I can, uh, how to say, expand from China, to you, from US to UK. I can expand from France to German. I can change my category. I can change the design of my website. It's a very small investment and you can quickly adjust. In e-commerce world, it's always dynamic, fast change, fast adjustment. So this, uh, I, I would say, it's a pretty model. How to start? Find a niche. Think about the product you really have passion on. You talk with your friend for a lot of time about it. You will, like, won't stop buying it. Or there are some hobbies you have, and the product related to hobby, you will always spend time on it. Find a niche. For example, these are the categories across platform. No matter social or marketplace is popular. Most of the people buying. And then play advertising. Think of some creative ideas, make it a nice photo, nice content, test the water, test the social traffic. Very important, find a trustworthy partner. And the most, the last, but no, no, sorry, but not, not the least, and the most important thing is put your customer as like your top priority to build the customer leverage. Uh, they are not, so for all your orders, it will not, not necessarily that to earn money on every each orders. There are some orders you have to give up, you have to compensate to make your customer happy, right? What you definitely don't want is they put a negative review on your Facebook or they file a case to Google. You want to continuously run your business. You want to actually have a customer, happy customers keep buying from you. The traffic cost is higher and higher. So the repurchase rate, the continuous, like the customer loyalty is very important. What we do, we build up a platform on the back end. We integrate with domestic, like Chinese suppliers, manufacturers, and sellers to enable you a 1 million product SKUs in English with nice photos, that's what we do on the back end. All the suppliers, we already vetted. These are the suppliers or manufacturers of the, for example, AliExpress sellers. Where you are buying from. And now I give you the access directly to the supplier, to the, to the vendor. On the front end, we integrate with Shopify. Very soon, we'll integrate with WooCommerce and maybe some other marketplaces as well. So you can just buy a few clicks uh, sync the product from the back office, the million uh, SKUs, to your Shopify store. And then you are ready to go. The product is there, the photo is there, then you can start to run the, run the traffic. F uh, opposite way, you can also send us the product you are interested to sell. We will find it, we will find the vendor, and then we will put it into your, your account, and then you are ready to go. To secure a very good customer service, user buyer behavior, uh, buyer experience, we integrated with over 200 shipping solutions to enable you guys ship it to US, UK, Canada, Australia, uh, Korea, and Japan, like over 20 countries, around seven days with a full tracking service. What the full tracking means? Once they place order, you will know the order status, they will know the order status. They, they know, oh, now it's on the plan. Oh, they know it's now uh, finished the customer clearance. I'm gonna receive it in three days. I know which call you're gonna deliver it to me. Okay, so as I mentioned, I just want to like, quickly go through the flow with you again. So you find the product you are interested, you put it into your web store, you advertise it. When there's an order, the order will be automatically synced into our platform. And then you come to pay, once you pay, we start to fulfill it. We do, <coughs> sorry, we do sourcing, quality control, pick and pack, and then ship to the consumer directly. Leave you a nice profit and also a peace of mind. Remember this case, right? $36 so versus $8.6. What we are doing, what uh, like we want to do, is we want to flat the cost. We give you, give global sellers the same cost structure as Chinese seller have, same shipping cost, the same purchasing cost. 
Sometimes it's even lower. So non-Chinese sellers, as I mentioned, really good at SEO, advertising, customer loyalty, and the people in local trust you. So you can have a higher price. That's the customer loyalty. Chinese sellers know the product very well, the massive uh, sourcing capability, faster shipping. So what we are doing is combine the advantages on both sides into the platform, into the system, enable you to sell global, enable you to have the same sourcing capability and the same cost structure as Chinese seller have. Okay, so here is a very, very quick demo of our solution. It's very simple. Connect to a store, uh, Shopify, for example. Yeah, and then it's connected. Then you go to product, you search the product you like, you add them into the info list, you edit a bit, description, photo, variants, save, it's uploaded to Shopify store. You can also delete your product. And then when the order comes in, you pay. You can select the shipping method that you prefer, you pay then we will take it care, take care of it from there. Okay, so if you believe in this model, you believe in social e-commerce, uh, take a picture, scan the QR code, um, our team will reach you, uh, and also that uh, we have live chat on our website. You can just ask questions, you can see, like tell us what you want. Our app now is free. It's if you are free for sign up, you're free for explore, explore. There are millions of SKUs in the platform for you to see. Just explore, get your ideas what you want to sell, and let us know. Okay. Um, Danimad, thank you for listening to me, and I wish you a great success in the global e-commerce. Thank you.